Hey everybody, welcome in to Go Fight Win, the show with all the high school football stories you love. On this week's episode, I'll speak with Marty Smith. If not for Marty, I may not be doing this show, but he shared Coffee Town with a lot of his audience and it helped my audience grow as well. So I can't wait to hear about Marty's time playing high school ball in the state of Virginia. Here in Georgia, a team that gave all it could in the face of uh, tragedy in its state championship game. I want to tip my cap to them. Shout out a coach who never punts and who Bill Belichick says is the brightest mind of every high school football coach alive. So yeah, that's making the cut. And uh, the real coffee town. Someone sent me a story about the real coffee town. We'll put it up next to the facts and see what we can find. Plus, coffee town that I actually know about. Uh, They're playing in their state championship game too. So you won't want to miss that broadcast. Any of these stories right here on Go Fight Win. Put your mouthpiece in. Get your feet chopping. It's a state championship edition of the show. Just give the ball to Don Cug and let that puzzle roll. Thanks to so many of you who already subscribe to the show and follow it. Keep up with it on YouTube and all the podcast platforms. If this is your first time checking it out, hit like, hit subscribe, follow along. And uh, just because high school football is ending and we move into the winter months doesn't mean we won't have stories to tell here on Go Fight Win. So follow along right now. Thanks to everyone as well who orders and uh, keeps their closets hat rack stocked with apparel from GoCoffeeTown.com and the team store. Y'all pointed out to me that Brandon Walker from Barstool Sports was wearing a gray Coffee Town hoodie that you can get yourself. A lot of you said, hey, he's he's repping the brand. I said, well, that's the most intelligent thing that he's ever done. And more than one of you said it's the only intelligent thing he's ever done. I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just happy that he is being smart, supporting Coffee Town. And you can be smart too. Just head on over to the store. Let people know that you're a fan of the Copperheads. All right, I want to start out with a story right here in uh, my backyard in the state of Georgia in the Class A Division II state championship game, Bowden beat Manchester 28-27. to Now, you may look at that and say, wow, what a great game from Bowden. They survived a close one and uh, got the dub. What you may not know about is the fact that Manchester lost one of its players the day before the state championship game. Brandon Smith passed away. And uh, obviously, when you have something like that at any time in the year, it will rock your high school community, not just the sports teams. Um, For Bowden, quarterback Kyler McGrin became the second player in Georgia history to throw for 2,000 yards and rush for 2,000 yards in the same season. And they defended their Class A Division II title 28-27 over Manchester and avenged their loss from earlier in the season uh, when they lost by a point to Manchester. But for me, the story here, and congratulations to Bowden. You can't take anything away from those guys, and no one ever will. No one will be able to. To me, um, I was just moved by Manchester's refusal to quit and the fact that, look, this is a bunch of human beings. Forget that they're high school kids. You have something like that, rock your town, rock your community the day before the biggest game that many of these guys will ever play in. And you have a slow start. Bowden starts really hot. And you think oh, maybe, you know, maybe Manchester just isn't there mentally enough for this game given the circumstances. But they don't stop. And they fight and claw all the way back. They cut the lead to 14-7 when Jaden Terry caught a 28-yard pass from Darius Bryant 
and then tied it on a nine-yard run by Quay Cooper after Terry intercepted a pass and returned it to the 26th. This is from Georgia Public Broadcasting. Manchester actually took a lead in the game when Terry hauled in a 55-yard touchdown pass from Bryant. Bowden then tied it back up with a minute 23 left in the half from McGrin. And uh, that came after a long run down the sideline. Now, this one looked like it might be heading to overtime. It might be a little extra free state championship football. Manchester's Darius Favors scored on a four-yard run with 7.23 left in the game to make it a one-point game. But officials called Manchester for an illegal block, which took away Jack Underwood's successful extra point. So you have a 15-yard penalty, backs the PAT up to a 35-yard field goal. For a lot of high school football teams around the country, that is a low percentage play. 35-yard field goal, it is what it is. Kicking a football is really hard. Just watch college game day and what Pat McAfee's trying to get normal fans to do. So Bowden decided to run a fake field goal instead. That pass was unsuccessful, and Bowden ran out the clock. But um, I'm just really struck by this team, this Manchester team. They carried uh, Brandon Smith's jersey out to midfield, his number 52 jersey, to honor him. And when it looked like their heads were anywhere else, other than that Mercedes-Benz Stadium turf, they decided that they were there to play. And they were there to play for Brandon, and they were there to give it their all and do everything they could to honor him. And uh, I don't care that they lost the game. I think that they did a lot more than anybody could ever expect them to do in honoring him, and that's just what they did. So great job, uh, Manchester. Great job, Bowden. Y'all uh, played a hell of a game, and you, you left a legacy behind, not only for Brandon, but for yourselves. I know it's really hard right now, and uh, I know there's <laughs> there's not a lot that seems to make sense probably in a lot of those homes and, uh, and in that town, certainly. But um, you can't take anything away from what y'all did. So great job. You moved me. And uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Congratulations. Um, let's move on to another story here. In Arkansas, Kevin Kelly. This is from uh, High School FN, powered by SB Live. I don't know what all these letters mean, all right? Uh, Kevin Kelly, a football coach that never punts, returning to Arkansas high school sidelines. Sheridan hires Kelly, who won nine state championships with Pulaski Academy. So I don't, I didn't really know much about this guy. I did a little bit of research about Kevin Kelly, and I learned that uh, not only are a lot of people excited that he's coming back because of his championship pedigree, New England Patriots head coach Bill Belichick an eight-time Super Bowl champ, referred to Kelly as probably the top high school coach in the country. Uh, that was according to the Boston Herald, a really cool story here, where uh, Belichick would actually consult with Kevin Kelly to learn what he was doing uh, coaching in Little Rock. When you got the seal of approval from Coach Belichick there, you're doing something right. And when you're never punting as a high school football coach, you're doing something right, at least in my book. Um, I, I heard a radio call the other day, just driving around town, heading back from the grocery store, and uh, picked up a radio call. And the, the radio broadcaster said, and here comes old Jack Leg Jones, whatever his name was, on to punt in the state championship game. This is his 56th punt of the year. Well, Coach Kelly ain't going for that. And obviously, it's working. Kevin Kelly, one of the most successful and innovative coaches to ever roam the sidelines in Arkansas high school football, was announced for the same position at Sheridan during a school board meeting Monday evening. He will be the program's third head coach in the past three seasons. So, you want a fixer? You want a program repairman? Bring the guy in who's never going to punt. 
Um, Coach Kelly's unique approach and vast knowledge of the game have led to many great achievements. Sheridan School District Superintendent Carla Nethery says. So Sheridan has been struggling, obviously. Haven't been winning many ball games. But here's how he gained his attention. During his 18 seasons leading the Pulaski Bruins for consistently onside kicking and never or rarely punting. This is crazy. I didn't know about this when I was putting the Coffee Town script together for this week's show. But he reminds me a lot of uh, Talon Junction, the team that Coffee Town's going up against. Really aggressive guy. After six seasons as the offensive coordinator under Kirby Norwood at Pulaski from 97 to 02, Kelly took over and became the fastest head coach in state history to eclipse 200 wins, earning the feat in just 230 games. This guy's a maniac. And he did it by onside kicking all the time and rarely punting? Maybe he knows something here. Maybe this is the key to the game that people are just too scared to unlock. Too scared to put on their keychain. Well, it's working for Coach Kelly. That was when, in 2014 when Pulaski Academy went from a highly successful program to a juggernaut as it won six of the next seven Class 5A state championships through 2020. So where'd he go? Uh... He received college interest through his high school coaching tenure, but finally decided to make the leap in May of 2021 when he went to Presbyterian College in Clinton, South Carolina. That brings us to a connection point with uh, the We Need More Dogs coach that retired after getting his start, um, David Bennett, coach at Presbyterian. So, place obviously is a turnstile for legendary innovative motivators in the sport but uh, after that stop he couldn't help but want to come back to the high school football field and who could blame him along with the nine state championships each one tattooed on the inside of his right bicep told you this guy's not human kelly's bruins appeared in the state final 12 times along with 18 trips to the quarterfinals and 15 to the semifinals, while compiling an overall record of 216-29-1. Former USA Today National Football Coach of the Year in 2016 and inducted into the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame in 2021. And just because he's in the Hall of Fame doesn't mean he's kicking his feet up. He's back, and he's back for blood. And we'll see what he does. Obviously, there's a lot of work to do at Sheridan where he's taking over now. Uh, but things weren't the best at Presbyterian. And he briefly worked on the Patriots staff under Coach Belichick following his departure from Presbyterian in 2022. So now he's learned from Belichick, not just sharing things with Belichick, that circle has been reciprocated. This is scary. This is scary stuff. Um, he returned to Little Rock with no plans. And that is when he was contacted about a uh, gym idea. And he cr created a curriculum for Kid Champion. And then one thing led to another. All that to say he's back where he needs to be. And that's on a football sideline. Telling that punter to work on long snapping work on being a fourth-string wide receiver, work on being a six-string quarterback. Because punting ain't something we do here at Sheridan, son. And that's a Coach Kelly guarantee. Be keeping my eye on Coach Kelly there. It's a terrifying proposition for a lot of Arkansas high school football teams. Don't, don't count them out just because they've been struggling now. Kelly's going to get them back. All right, here's one thing that y'all submitted to me through the portal on gocoffeetown.com. You've got your own stories about your high school football glory days that you want to share. You can do it there or at gocoffeetown on Twitter uh, or X and Instagram. So this is from Peyton Snyder. It's a very short message. A lot of these are several paragraphs long as people pontificate about how they 
dominated their high school football careers. But this is just a quick little summary out of the state of Mississippi from Peyton Snyder. In rural Mississippi, there is a town by the name of Coffeeville. The Coffeeville Pirates were outscored on the gridiron this year, 365 to 62, to end the season 0 and 9. There is no deeper story here. Just thought you should know. Peyton, thank you for letting me know so I can let everybody else know that that Coffeeville team does have a story. It does. You said there's no deeper story. I disagree. You go 0-9, 365 to 62, and you're still showing up. Because you know what's going to happen one day, Peyton. Um, I don't know if you're telling me this because, you know, maybe you're a fan of a rival team out there in Mississippi. But there will come a day when Coffeeville and the Pirates, they get their own coach, Kelly, to come through. They get their own guy to show up who nobody knows. He's a walking legend, a living, breathing titan of the industry. And those Coffeeville Titans are going to win. Maybe it's one game next year. Maybe it's two games the next year. But if there's one thing I know about Coffee Town, Coffeeville, Coffee County, Coffee Bluff, wherever you are, you can't hold a good coffee team down. And that's what we're going to find out as Coffee Town takes on Talon Junction in the state championship. Coffee Town taking on Talon Junction in the state championship game. Man alive. I'm more nervous than a tattoo artist in an earthquake. Talon Junction wins the toss, elects to defer. They'll kick off to Tumbleweed Taylor back from his three-game suspension for CBD. Tumbleweed takes it five yards back in the end zone and runs right into their wedge buster at the 18. Maybe he should have nailed it, but Tumbleweed knocked their special teams captain flat out. I like the gumption. We're sending a message. First and 10, Reptile Henderson play action rolls out to his right, takes a lick and throws a pick. Right to a Tornado's linebacker, and now Reptile's down holding his throwing shoulder. Talon Junction took it all the way back to our one. We'll take a radio timeout for injury, and I'm fixing to go puke. Fellas, do you feel like your sleigh can't get off the ground as good as it once did? Are you having trouble keeping your stocking full, lacking that jingle in your holiday bells, running low on reindeer antler spray and topical ointments? Call In The Zone Testosterone for a free appraisal this holiday season. Well, we're having a reptile dysfunction here at State. Talon Junction goal to go on the one. They got the biggest quarterback in all of 2A, Ty Zimmerman. They call him Ty Zilla. 6'4", 232 pounds, and Ty Zilla runs right through Mount Everest Michaels and both our linebackers before headbutting the goalpost. Talon Junction going for two now to set the tone. Zimmerman in the pistol. Takes a toss and runs right up to center's tail. And Toddzilla's stomping all over our hearts. Not even 10 seconds in the ball game. Prince Rockwell in the gun now with Reptile out. Rockwell is one of 18 on the season with three interceptions and four fumbles. Lord help us. First and 10 on our 20. Rockwell with a toss sweep right to Crockpot Peters. And Crockpot's cooking more like a microwave tonight. Nobody's going to touch him. 30, 20. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, touchdown, cover hands. And now we'll go for two. Just get down if it ain't open, Prince. Rockwell looking. He throws his tip at the line right into the hands of one of their linebackers. And now he's going to take it back 98 yards. We were chasing that tornado like Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton, but they got away with a couple holes behind the return, and nobody was going to catch him. And a score like that on a PAT counts for two points. It is now 10-6, Talon Junction. So here come the Tornadoes again. Kaminsky sends it away, and it's a touchback. Toddzilla back out there, and he crushed us with a short field and his legs the first time out. Let's see what he does here. His arm has been up and down this year. Ten touchdowns and nine interceptions. Zimmerman in the gun. We pressure him out of the pocket. Rolling right and throws it all the way across his body to the far end of the field, a one-on-one -on -one ball, and it is caught for a Talon Junction touchdown, 80 yards on the score, man alive. Two-point conversion now, they run an end-around wide receiver pass to guess who? 
Tornado Chizilla all alone in the back of the end zone, just reached an arm up there and caught it with one hand like a dad playing backyard football. It is 18 to 6, Talon Junction. Tornadoes line up to kick it away, and it's an onside kick. We're not prepared for this. They recover, and now we are reeling like a drunk on a deep sea fishing trip. Toddzilla in the gun. We blitz, but he's still got all day back here, and he's just toying with us. Throws Watson down by the back of the helmet, spins out of Velcro Vaughn's arms, and takes off down the sideline. Rockwell chasing him down. Zimmerman spins out of an arm tackle and backpedals into the end zone. Talon Junction fans are throwing popcorns and drinks all over there at their corner of the stadium giving me flashbacks of opening night at the Taylor Swift movie with my, with my granddaughter. I took my granddaughter. Once again, they'll go for two, and Todd Zilla hands that ball off to Nailgun Nichols, who walks in untouched. Talon Junction up 26-6, to six, heading to halftime, and it's time for Coach Swansea to pour kerosene on them whiteboards and light a match because the plan ain't working. All right, let's turn the spotlight to our academic athlete, student equipment manager, Huck Mantigo. Huck, you've done an atrocious job keeping up equipment this year. Our team has one water bottle. Several starters have to share helmets. And I've seen a bunch of guys using duct tape on their cleats since the shoestring fire. Now your lone contribution this season is you took over the equipment job after we lost our first game of the season. We've been undefeated since. Coach is superstitious, so we won't fire you. But I'll get your resume together, get a LinkedIn started up, just in case we don't close it out at state. Because things may not work out for you from here. I'm just being transparent with you, son. Talon Junction up 26-13 here in the third after that punt return touchdown from Lubbock, Houston. Got a stop and some momentum. And Tyzilla's starting to look more human than monster down there. Tornado's on their 20, and they just hand it off like they did the last drive. Three plays in a row. Just trying to milk that clock. You can't do that to this Coffee Town team. I don't care how big you are or how big your lead is. Third and seven. Yep, Anesthesia Andrews gets inside and forces a fourth down. Imagine they'll kick away from Houston this time, and we block it. It's bouncing down there around the nine, and we fall on it out of bounds, but it's our ball. <laughs> and look who is coming back out to play. I just got the chills. Reptile Henderson is not going to miss his last game as a copperhead due to some injury. I don't know if it's a collarbone or a rib or a daggum funny bone, but you better aim for the heart if you want to take out number five. Is he just a decoy? We'll find out. Henderson in the gun, fakes a toss, and runs his own QB keeper through three tacklers for a coffee town touchdown. Reptile looked like a raccoon running through a junkyard, just lowered that shoulder and could have took on eight more tornadoes. He comes up out of the pile, and his arm is dangling like a worm on a hook out of that shoulder pad. So here we go. We're down 26-20. Two minutes left. What is Toddzilla going to do here? He's in the gun now. Looks to the sideline, and they snap it. He ain't paying attention. It hits him in the face mask, and Mount Everest Michaels is back here to fall on it. We have the ball on their 30. Henderson hands it off to Crockpot. There is nothing there. Time is bleeding out like we cut the clock open with a knife. Second and long, Reptile got a little throw out there to the tailback in the flats, and he hits the duct tape on his cleats. That arm is just not looking good. Third and long, we try a little trap draw. It picks up maybe four yards. So we got a fourth down. Need a touchdown for the state title, or it's probably over. Henderson in the gun. How far can he throw it? Can he even throw it at all? Tornado's crashing in on him. He spins away from one, getting pulled down by two more, and Reptile flips the ball to his left hand and throws it to a wide open Lovett Houston for a coffee time touchdown. Reptile, Henderson, you got more guts than a government mule, son. And now we got to play defense. Kaminsky sends it away, and Talon Junction sets up a return. Squirts Munoz is dangerous, and there he goes right up the middle. 50, 45, 40, all the way down to our 15-yard line. One minute left. All they need is a field goal to win and make me slam my face in this sliding glass window. First down, Tyzilla zips a dart right down to the three-yard line. I can't take it. First and goal. They try to run Zimmerman on a sneak, and he picks up one. I'm sick. They got no timeouts. Second and goal. Tyzilla with a play fake. Straightens up and throws at the fullback, but it's too high. Off his fingers, we dive for an interception and drop it. 
And that stops the clock. I picked a bad night to forget my gold bond. Third down now. Zimmerman rolls out on a boot looking for his tight end. It ain't there. He tucks it and runs. And Pine Straw Hemingway launches like a missile to keep him out of the end zone. Hemingway was spying Toddzilla and matched him step for step. Pine Straw ain't much to look at. He's an undersized middle linebacker, but cut him loose and he can really cover some ground. Just a gritty hustle play that could have saved a ball game for us and saved our season. Talon Junction trailing 27-26. Fourth and goal from the one. They can kick a field goal and win it. But they were aggressive to start this thing and we just kicked a hornet's nest. The Tornadoes want to win with a statement. Tadzilla takes a snap from the gun. That big quarterback is going to dive and try to get the ball over the goal line. Every single copperhead in the zip code meets him there, and we pick him up and throw him down on the turf. It took seven or eight of our boys to pick him up like a piece of furniture. Then they dropped him so hard his kids are going to come out dizzy. Talon Junction thinks he crossed the plane, but there's no way to know and no way to review it. Reptile Henderson is going to kneel this thing with about an inch of real estate to work with, and Coffee Town wins state. Cover Town wins state. The Copperheads are carrying Reptile and Talon Junction head coach Bart Billingsley off the field against his will. But he chose not to do the field goal. Like Oedipus, he just flew too close to the sun, son, and it burned him. What a game. And if that don't light your fire, your wood's wet. Woo. Them Copperheads is hell, don't they? Coming up, a man who encouraged, inspired, me to uh, share that Coffee Town story with y'all time and time again. His name is Marty Smith. You may have heard of him over on ESPN and the SEC Network. Well, he loves high school football too. He played it, won a state championship himself, and he's got some yarns to spin. Uh, you know him from the Marty and McGee show. See him on the SEC Network on ESPN. You've seen him at the Masters. Marty Smith, before you did all that stuff, you earned a uh, state championship in high school in the great state of Virginia. Tell me about your time wearing that number nine for Giles. It was a long time ago. Uh, this is actually the 30th anniversary season of that 1993 state championship that my friends and I won back in, in Virginia. And... I've thought a lot about it, especially this year. I'm one of those never graduate guys. I mean, I'm sitting here, they, somebody handed me a basketball, and I just have to, I'm always, if there's a ball around, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be throwing it, hitting it, passing it. And in my town, Parisburg, Virginia, we're a Friday Night Lights town. We're one of those towns that if you want to rob somebody in town, Friday nights in the fall are your best bet because – Everybody's at the game and nobody locks their doors. And it's this caravan mentality. There's a great scene in Friday Night Lights where they're going to state and there is a line of cars for miles following the school bus that's carrying the team. That's our town. And so to grow up in a town like that when you're – like we had heroes that played at Virginia Tech and we had heroes that played – for, at the time, the Washington Redskins, of course, now the Commanders. Um, but our real heroes were the Spartans that were older than us, and the dream that was understood that if you were a boy that was born into that town, you were going to play Spartan football. And to deliver a championship meant to deliver purpose and to deliver a positive identity and bragging rights because if we won on Friday nights, they won on Monday morning when they got to the office. And you carry a lot. It's, you don't realize all that you're carrying as a 16, 17-year-old in that energy until you're older and move on from it. But I'll never forget, Wes. I remember my senior year. It was a cold day. It was a Wednesday, and we were doing special teams practices. I was the punt returner. I was the field goal holder. So I was like on all the special teams too. And we were practicing field goals. And my brother Maurice Milton, who was our kicker, 
was kicking, I was holding, and I'm belly aching. I'm just bitching and moaning. I can't wait to get out of here, go see my girlfriend. I'm tired of practice. And our coach, who was also my defensive backs coach, uh, a guy named Jeff Williams, walked over to Maurice and me, and he said, shut up. Stop talking like that. Someday, when you leave this, you would get, you're going to be in a position where you would give anything to come back and strap up one more time and do it again. And we kind of looked at each other and rolled our eyes, but man, if he wasn't right. And I, there's a great speech that Sean Payton gives in Kenny Chesney's Boys of Fall music video where he's back at his alma mater 27 years later. And he says when he walked in, he was just taken back immediately by the smells, by the sounds of when he was there. And he said to those young men in that moment, you're going to go be fathers. You're going to go be husbands. There's going to be amazing moments in your life as you progress forward, but there's never going to be this again. And damn, if he wasn't right to. There's an energy that comes with that brotherhood and that experience under those lights that is not replicable ever again. And I'm so grateful for it, and I truly would give anything to go back and just do it one more time. You're so impressionable at that age. And I've had athletes come on the show that played college ball, NFL, and they have, to a man, photographic memories of scores oh, yeah, and, and guys that lit them up and guys they lit up. Tell me about the night that you won the state championship. I've heard you tell the story a couple times, but – it does sound like something out of uh, out of Friday Night Lights. It really is a movie script. Um, we actually hosted the state title game at our field, and at that time, that's how the it, our governing body is called the Virginia High School League, the VHSL. They allowed that, and so we are thirteen and zero, and we are getting ready to play Central High School of Lunenburg which had won 27 consecutive games. And they were the runaway favorite uh, to beat us. And we went in there, and you could tell very quickly that they wanted to try to impose their will. They ran the football, and the hitting in that game, and it was bitter cold. I, I mean bitter cold. There was damn blizzard snow and sideways. It was straight out of a movie. There were our stadium, Spartan Stadium, probably at the time held a thousand people, maybe. I don't know. It's like a Paul Bunyan story. These days there were 10,000 people there. <laughs> exactly. And it really was packed. Like people came from all over the state to see this game against these two undefeated powerhouse programs. And I think it was the second drive of the game. Maurice Milton, the guy that I just mentioned, who was our kicker, he was the fastest player on our team, faster even than his twin brother Rayfield, rest in peace. My brother who recently passed away, the greatest athlete I've ever been on any field with in any sport. Um, they went to throw uh, this little kind of uh, flat pattern to the running back, and Mo read it perfectly, stepped in front of the, the pass, and housed it like a 50-yard uh, pick six. And it was a wrap from there. The hitting in that game was serious, and it was like our bones were brittle. I remember they had a kid named Michael Hurt who played tailback and was an all-state superstar running back. And they ran a, a, a simple sweep away from me. I was the left cornerback. And I remember r running as hard as I could run, and I had the angle on this guy. And there's only been two players that I can ever remember who did this. He was so fast, he outran, because, I mean, I was a slow farm boy. But <laughs> he outran the angle. And I remember being so embarrassed by that. But I also... So the game ends, and we win. And I remember channels WDBJ7 was the CBS station in our region, our area. They were out of Roanoke, 60-plus miles away. And they had the first 
high school wrap-up show, I think, anywhere. Now they're every in every town. But it was called Friday Football Extra. And the host was Mike Stevens. And they were there that day to chronicle our state championship victory. And I'll never forget, they put, they put the camera in my face, of all people. And I'm like crying, and it's really embarrassing. But I remember saying, like, I remember all those tears, and I remember all that sweat, and I remember all of that shit we hated so much to get us to that place, but it was all worth it because we were number one. And that makes me think about, I will never forget, I wrote about this in my first book. I remember distinctly and vividly. We didn't have a field house. We had the ag building. And I remember sitting, we had this overhang thing, like a like a walkway carport thing. And between two-a-day practices in August of 1993, I remember lean, leaning up against this steel post Pads, shoulder pads on. And back then, you could take a damn nap on our shoulder pads. They were so huge. <laughs> on one of them. On one of them, that's right. And Peter Janey was an all-state linebacker for us, an all-state running back for us, one of the greatest players in the history of our program. And Peter and I were buddies. And I remember saying to him, looking at him, I was eating a soggy peanut butter sandwich made by the the booster club that they would put in those. We didn't have those Ziploc bags that you Ziplocked. It was the ones that you like folded over themselves <laughs> and made the sandwich extra soggy. And I remember taking a bite of that soggy PBJ and looking at Peter and go, going, I can't do this, man. Like, screw this, man. I'm quitting, dude. And Peter just took a bite out of his peanut butter sandwich and smiled and goes, no, you're not. <laughs> And it was this, it was so funny. And now with the perspective I have as a 47-year-old man with gray hair, we weren't playing for us. We were playing for our dads. And he was so right. You can't quit when your fathers and your uncles and in a lot of cases your moms and all those people with the train horns and waving the bandanas we're playing vicariously through you. You don't quit that. And it really is a movie. And I want to tell you one more thing, Wesley. Three years ago now, as we sit here, I was asked by my dear friend, Kate Jackson, who's the coordinating producer at ESPN, over the Heisman Trophy broadcast. She asked me to be a part of the Heisman broadcast starting in 2021, and I'll never forget it, my tailor, which is Alton Lane, and Peyton Jenkins is the guy who founded that company. Peyton made me a suit that was this beautiful green suit, and I have kind of elaborate lining in my suit jackets, and I always try to put a stitched message in the inside pocket that is special to me. I'll be damned. I open up the the jacket when I get it. And in pink stitching, it just says (laughs) 27-18. He had gone and researched the final score of the state championship game in 1993 and did that for me. And I just thought that was so thoughtful. Guys telling stories of his own, man. Yes. I mean, it's, it was just really cool. I mean, it made me emotional because it's like what my dad would say Mm. about his boy being part of the Heisman trophy broadcast that I watched with him. And for, you know, for that matter, the masters, which I watched with him every year, I'm just so full of gratitude for all those people in my life who are that kind Two more, and uh, we can wrap this thing up. You uh, have a book out, Sideline CEO, and you talk to a lot of phenomenal college coaches. But at the end of the book, you do give a shout-out to your high school upbringing. Who is the coach that you uh, 
dropped there in the book and why did he mean so much to you? And are, are there any other coaches that still stick with you like that, whether it's for serious reasons or because, you know, they said something that still makes you laugh? Well, there's a lot of them that still make us laugh. And um, I have a text string with like 30 of my high school teammates. And like, that's a brotherhood, man. Winning that state championship, it, it forges this, this bond that's literally there for the rest of your life. And there's this unique kinship too, and this unique fraternity for anybody that played high school football. If you step between the lines as a high school football player, you have those stories. And Steve Ragsdale was my head coach at Giles High School, and he's a Virginia High School League Hall of Famer. He won myriad high school state championships at Giles High. And his influence on our lives is truly indescribable. You cannot he, – he was brilliant at teaching us about life while – coaching us in football, and he doesn't want to hear it. He was an esteemed educator. Mathematics teacher taught us calculus, taught us trig, all of these advanced mathematics, and he will tell you, I was an educator first and a football coach second, but this is what I wrote in Sideline CEO. That's all well and good. Coach can think that, but I don't remember a damn thing he taught me in the classroom And I remember everything he taught me in the locker room. And that is the kind of thing that would probably make him go, Marty, son, you didn't have your priorities straight. Y'all think I got an accent, you ought to hear his. But a very special person in my life to this day. I'll call him and we'll talk for 90 minutes or two hours about everything. Last one for you. I ask every person that comes on this question. One song from your high school pregame playlist through whatever platform or medium you were listening to it on what was uh what was marty smith listening to before taking the field welcome to the jungle guns and roses appetite for destruction is the greatest rock and roll album of all time and that is one of the signature songs but it is it was every friday i had a diary of gold two-door 1985 outdoorsman model Chevrolet Blazer, four on the floor. And we would get in that thing, and I had a Sanyo aftermarket tape deck (laughs) in my outdoorsman diary of gold, four on the floor Chevrolet Blazer, which was my mama's, which they bought brand new from Michener Chevrolet. But then one of the guys, we owned a cattle farm. And one of the high school boys that helped us throw hay when I was a kid wrapped that thing around a deer in the middle of 460, tore the whole front end out of it. Then it became mine when I got my license. Wish I had it right now. But we listened to All the Gold in California by Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. We listened to Fishing in the Dark by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. We listened to uh, a lot of like The Chronic by Dr. Dre and Welcome to the Jungle was kind of the the final mission statement. And again, I'd give anything to strap up one more time. Praise God, brother. What are you doing right now? College football wrapping up? Uh, where, where can people find you in the next few weeks, months? Yeah, man. Uh, we'll be doing the college football playoff through January 8th, and then it's, of course, in Houston, the national championship, and then January 9th, I will be at a college basketball game somewhere for Super Tuesday. I'll go ahead and tell you right now, I probably won't know a single name on either team. <laughs> that uh, won't be the first time. But then I do uh, Super Tuesday college basketball uh, through kind of the Final Four with Carl Ravitch and Jimmy Dykes. Love those two. Love making college basketball broadcasts with them. Then we go straight into Augusta National at the Masters for 10 or 12 days. Uh, I also do the Masters podcast, so I'm there for for quite a while. Then we're on into all of the spring college football. Then we're into the PGA Championship after that. I hope this year I'm doing the Kentucky Derby. I may be doing Formula One in Miami. Not sure yet, but we don't really stop. I try to slow down a little bit in the summer, but... 
one of the greatest parts of my amazing opportunity at ESPN is the diversity in the job. It's invigorating to me. Um, like it's interesting to go straight from one sport to the next because it demands so much of self. It demands that I am diligent and that I am undaunted in continuing to stay challenged. And to me, that's invigorating. I love it. Man, I appreciate your time so much. Appreciate uh, everything you've done for me and uh, outside of this show. And great to catch up with you, man. I love this project. Uh, high school football is so important. It is one of those threads that weaves through the American fabric. And I don't care if you're from Compton, California, Appalachia, where I grew up, uh, Florida, Maine, New Mexico, it doesn't matter. And so much of what divides us outside the lines doesn't exist between the lines. And I love every bit of that. Thank you, Marty Smith, Brother Smith. I wouldn't be doing this show probably. I wouldn't be making these Coffee Town videos for too much longer if it wasn't for Brother Smith and Brother McGee sharing some Coffee Town clips over there on their show, their program. And uh, they've kind of passed the baton and they let y'all take it now. And for the people who enjoy it, whether you enjoyed it from day one when it came on the scene there in 2019, or you're just learning about it and just enjoying it, what Coffee Town's all about. It's my love letter to high school football. And as state championships wrap up around the country and the holiday season is upon us, whether your team made it to state or the playoffs or not, these stories, your towns, your coaches, are gifts that always give back. And they give back to you more and more each year as the years go by. And I think we picked that up from Marty's experience for sure. I hope you all have a great weekend. Get your shopping done. Time's running out. And if you need a perfect gift for the high school football fan in your life, well, look no further than the GoCoffeeTown.com team store. Might just get some state championship shirts up there now, son. Y'all have a great week. Catch you soon. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.